am Davey Wavy and welcome to day two of Business of Sex. And a big shout out to Pure for Men and to adamandeve.com for sponsoring this broadcast because we absolutely couldn't have done it without them. My first guest today is someone who absolutely needs no introduction at all. It is the one, the only Brent Corgan. <laughs> Welcome well, to the show. Thank you for having me. It is my pleasure. You know, uh, you probably don't remember this, but uh, I think it was like 2005. It was my first Pride Parade ever. We were in New York City, and I was watching the floats go by, and you, I think you were on one of the like big trucks, and I didn't know who you were, and I just saw this beautiful young boy kind of going down, and he had like his shorts pulled down, and we made eye contact, and I will never forget that moment for the rest of my life and here we are it's the fruition of that moment 2005 <laughs> yeah i've yeah. been holding on to it for a long time so you know it's funny because like that image of you on the float i think a lot of people have perceptions around like adult models and, and what their lives are like and the reality is i mean i always see pictures of you like with horses it's a little bit different what's the real what's the real brent um you know after 12 years in the business um you know, you, you go along and you really, you really want to be good at it. You immerse yourself in it and you kind of, it's a way of life in, 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 so, in just about any sense of the word. I mean, all the events and all the traveling and, you know, obviously it's how you make your money. It's, you know, um, cultivating a fan base and, and maintaining connections um, and, like, dare I say it, relationships with some of your more, like, ardent fans. I mean, this is, it really is a day in and day out thing. And, um, a couple of years ago, I got to a point where, um, you know, porn just wasn't really kind of giving me what what I thought it would. You know, I, it kind of ran its course, and I and I uh, I stepped back and I I was like, well, what will make me happy? What what truly will fulfill me and give me, um, you know, that like that space that gives me peace? You know, kind of gives me that meditation point. But for me, um, you know, my passion was always horses. Uh, from the very start, um, a couple of years ago, I just said, "Fuck it, I want to be happy," you know, and I got to do something about this. So, um, you know, I went back to um, jumping. I, I jump horses. That's really my sport. I fiercely guard my uh, my career in show jumping. We actually call it hunter jumper because it's really conservative, and I mean, it's it's bad enough. I, mean, I can't. I mean, Sean Lockhart, my legal name, and Brent Corrigan. There's no. I mean, they're just. Yeah, you can't you can't hide it. Well, let's so let's transition from horses to horse hung. Are you sure? Because I could <laughs> honestly, I could probably talk about horses all day. Don't let me do it. Let's rewind to when you really got started in the adult world because you were young, right? You were you were really young, seventeen. Mm -hmm. What? How, how were you even able to get involved in that world at seventeen? Well, um, you know, it's a story that's been hashed and rehashed and told, and I, I mean. Um, it's not that I don't like talking about it. It's just one of these things that I, uh, I've sort of not, I, I've made amends with it. I've, I've taken my part of responsibility for it. But the thing is, um, I had a partner, my boyfriend at the time, wanted to work with a certain studio, and sort of he used me as leverage at 17. And um, that's, that producer, Cobra Video, they, uh, they didn't know how old I was at first. But before going off to film with them, you know, I, you know, I had a phone call with the owner of the company and I said, look, you should know, I don't feel right about this. And that's a conversation that is actually in my book. Um, that, you know, it's something I haven't told anyone. And there's so much about my life story and all the controversy, you know, the murder investigation, the civil suit, you know, my relationship with Brian at Cobra Video. There's so much that has yet to be, you know, divulged and it's all, you know, in that book. And, you know, getting into porn at 17 was really more about um, supporting myself. Is that what, what attracted you to it? Was It was kind of financial independence and... Yeah, I mean, I love my mother. She's, she's my mother, I mean, she's my mom, I mean. But she, uh, there were a couple years there where she was a little bit unreliable and I knew I had to do something that would ultimately, if I were to find myself pretty much alone and a minor, at least I'd be able to take care of myself, and porn was it. When you did get involved with uh, the adult world, how was it different than what you might have expected? Or was it? Was it kind of... You know, when you're a kid, you think you know everything. So, and then even looking back, I don't think I knew anything. I didn't know what to expect about yeah. the adult industry. In fact, I didn't go into it as a career. I went into it, you know, just to, to get by. And 
um, when all the controversy kind of just opened up and it just could have exploded on the scene. At, I was 19 by then. I, there was no going back at that point. I, I learned to produce and I learned to um, cultivate a, like a presence in my career and in my work that um, commanded some form of, um, of idea of me with my fans and my viewers that it was more than just the sex. And, and maybe, I mean, I know I'm probably kidding myself, but you know, I never just exploited myself. It was always really about sharing as much as I could, you know, about my personality, about the things that I love, the things that I, my point of view, my perspectives, and then of course, you know, my body. And Those years though, like obviously a lot happened and you mentioned there was kind of a lot going around all of that uh, and there's a movie being made. Does it frustrate you that like the story is being told in a, in a way that might not necessarily reflect your truth? Yes. <laughs> Um, to, to keep it short and quick, um, right. yes. And the thing is, like, I did an interview with Straight Up Gay Porn. I said, hey, look, I'll give you an exclusive. And I told them about how everything went down with the movie King Cobra. And um, they had approached me to um, consult and act like a, like a bit part in the film. And honestly, when it was all said and done, it was a big rush job. And I told them I couldn't do it, um, you know, in their time frame. And I also didn't feel comfortable doing it um, for them, you know, the reality of it is at the end of the day, this is, my story is like, it's the one equitous thing I really truly had to take away. And so I didn't want to tell, I didn't want to be a part of that film if they weren't going to tell my story. And I read that screenplay, they're not telling my story. But you will have the chance to tell your story because you're working on a book. Where will people be able to, to get that? Is it through your website? Mm -hmm. um, I am being brave and I'm self-publishing. Uh, I just feel like that's um, it's something that's meant to be told by me and distributed by me and uh, I'm, I'm aiming for an October 31st release date, which is my 30th birthday. Okay, and what's the website that people can, can find out about it? It's uh, thenewbrentcorrigan.com. Of the content that you filmed, what, what are some of the more, what's the most like, embarrassing moment that kind of comes to mind? Because <sighs> we talked yesterday a lot about people shitting on dicks. That was, yeah. that was a recurring you know what? That, thing. That happens just, you know, that's just like, when, you're, when your home field is, you know, a shit can and it's gonna happen, I'm sorry. Right. Like that's cru well, really crass. That's but. why one of our sponsors is Pure For Men. <laughs> it's those fiber tablets. <laughs> you know what, I always wondered what those did. Um, <laughs> so We had three of them on set yesterday and everyone took them at the end of the day, so. I wonder what those, uh, what their uh, story they had to tell. My first Falcon porno, I was, it was pretty much the early start of my, early part of my career. I think it was 19 years old and they used to do these heinous like $100,000 budget films, movie, pornos. And uh, they had me in for this thing called Velvet Mafia. And the makeup guy was amazing. I've totally seen this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I've seen it. You know, yeah. it's uh, it, it, the acting. Don't watch it for the acting. Ugh. Which I don't think people are watching. No, for. I know I they don't. Out. But the thing is, I'm so embarrassed because yeah. I went on to do non-porn like acting, right. and that acting is so bad in that that I just I couldn't even I couldn't do it. Makeup guy and I got along great. Everyone loves the makeup guy. Well, right. um, you know, Chad Hunt's dick is like. Okay. Mm -hmm. Serious. It's the size of you. Like it's a. Seriously. It's its own entity. So somehow, some way, I had to fit that in the size of me, um, and. Uh, for not just like five minutes either. For right. like. Uh, whole, yeah, when we film those kinds of scenes, we're pretty much going at it for about three hours. I'm envious, but also like terrified. I had trouble getting lubrication up inside me because they just you, you think that you could put it on and then just slide oh it gosh. in, but you know when you're 12 inches, that's a big deal. I mean, it's a big deal. So the makeup guy had me stand on my head in a chair with my feet straight up in the air, like in the back room, and he put some lube in a <laughs> anima bottle, but um, he didn't fill it all the way up. And so when he went to put the uh, lube into me, he also put the air in me. So if you can imagine, uh, it, it's just an ass full of air, yeah, and this then is a 12-inch dick. Grief right. territory. Right. This is your toy. So the funny thing is, I've, I've experienced you before through the through the flesh jack as many people have <laughs> does that does that weird you out like knowing that people around the world are like fucking a butt replica of you is it feel i can't like I, what does that feel like uh i you probably wouldn't believe me if i told you i, I don't really think about it 
Let's think about it. You know what I think about is the fact that every month, Flesh Track gives me a small percentage. <laughs> and um, so when you buy those, um, especially through my website, thenewbrentcorrigan.com, uh, I get a little percentage. There's also a dick. Right, there's three. There's a, the mouth molded, the cock, and then the rear end. So here's the thing about the dick, because my assumption was always like, it's ca camera angles, like on camera, it looks like you have a big dick. And I was always a little suspicious, because like, you know, they, they can, you're also a smaller guy, so things proportionally l look different. Uh, no, it's a big dick, because I, I have seen, it's an, it's an accurate molding, right? They don't enlarge <laughs> it, like that's the real deal. Right, um, well, we actually filmed the, the casting, the cast of it, rather. Uh, with Flesh Jack, I have a new product coming out called the Brent Corrigan uh, Quick Shot. So it's, you know, these Flesh Lights, Flesh Jacks are like this big and they don't travel well. I so mean, you did travel with this. I'll tell TSA. you about that one. That's an embarrassing one. They open, because they th see this cyber flesh in the, in the scanners and they freak out. They think it's like some sort of like bomb making tiny. Right, it's a terrorist attack. And then they open up your bag and they're like, oh. And it's a butt. Oh, well, I mean, God forbid it'd be the dildo, right? I'm mean, right. gonna say dildo? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, dildo, dildo, dildo. <laughs> so for the folks at home, uh, a good place to find you is the new Brent, Cor new Brent Corrigan com or the new, what is it? The new, the new Brent, Brent Cor Corrigan com. I cool. know. <laughs> and what's your Twitter handle? At Brent Corrigan. Thank you for, for, for being here. This is this was like such an amazing moment <laughs> for, for me. And Thank you. I'm sure for everyone at home. So, um, we're gonna cut to a very quick 60 second sponsor break, but make sure you hang in there because we'll be back right after this. I'm Davey Wavy, and today I want to talk to you about your bum, and more specifically, how you can stay ready. Pure for Men is a proprietary fiber supplement that is a blend of psyllium, flax, and chia seed. It works like a sponge going through your body so that when you go, you fully go. This, of course, reduces prep time and makes you more comfortable and confident. And since most of us don't get enough fiber naturally through our diets, this can make a difference in your overall health. For more information, visit pureformen.com. I'm Davey Wavy, and as a special thank you from adamandeve.com, use discount code LIVE50 to save 50% off almost any one item and get free shipping in the US. Adam and Eve has every sex toy that you could possibly imagine, and also a lot that you probably couldn't imagine, but trust me, they're real. You'll also get 24-7 customer service, 100% customer satisfaction, and 20% of the profits go to fighting the spread of HIV and STDs, so you can get off with peace of mind. With 10 million plus highly satisfied customers, see what all the fuss is about at adamandeve.com. All right, well, welcome back, guys. I am joined by another special guest. It is Bryce Wagner. Thank you for, for being here. Thanks for having me, Dave. Appreciate it, man. So you are the director for After Porn Ends. I am the director, creator, producer, um, Gadfly. The, the everything. You know, pretty much, yeah. So, <laughs> so for people that aren't as familiar with, this, with the, the movie, what, what is it? What's kind of the synopsis? Uh, After Porn Ends, the, the idea of, uh, of the first film was... Um, what happens after you leave a life in the adult business and the pornography business? I thought that everybody in porno was rich and famous, and they just you know rode off into the sunset and with their with their with their shekels and were done. And so that's uh, not what happens. It is not. Spoiler, well, is, spoiler alert. <laughs> and I, and I found this guy's blog, Luke Ford, and I uh, started reading these just train wreck stories of of what it was, and I was like, man. Uh, that's you know, you know that's 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 awesome in a way, but isn't there other good stories? Or right. is, is there a yin to this yang here? Right. And uh, so that was the idea. Let's see what happens when you leave that business. Did you did you go in kind of with the idea of like what the message was going to be, or did the story like organically write itself? I, what it did was the first one because I wanted to you know what I wanted to say was I said you know what happens and is it good or bad for you? So I, everybody got the, the same first 10 questions. Like I, that was like, and I wanted to see, you know, did you save sure. your money? Did you know what you're getting into? How are you treated, et cetera. And then, you know, you open up and you get to know somebody over a few days, you know, in their home and in an interview and life just kind of happens then. <laughs> yeah, and, and when you had these conversations with people, it seemed like, at least from, from my perspective, that people fell into like one of two categories with their, their experience. Can you, can you explain that a little bit? Especially when we first did that film, you know, the, the monolith of social media had not really taken hold. So you didn't really know a lot about the people. So you get there and you're like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm this and this is what's happening. And you get on the phone, you get a sense of it, then you get there and it's either 
good or bad. And you have like the case of like Randy West in the first film, he's just a wonderful man, neat guy, but you see that he, you know, he lives in this great house in Las Vegas, a couple of nice cars, golf membership, you know, he's enjoying the retired life, but in the end, you really, you see that he missed out probably on the love of his life, and it's, which is kind of sad. Uh, and uh, I'm a bit of a romantic, so I found it really sad. Um, and other stories like that, we just didn't know that was the, the, whether the good or the bad was going to happen. It's almost like people went in either for like the right reasons because like we had Trenton Ducati here yesterday. Like this is a man who's like living his truth, doing porn. It's like what he loves. He's passionate about it. He feels like it's a gift. Like he went into it for the right reasons. But then there's also people that didn't necessarily go in for the right reasons, and then it usually doesn't end well, right? It's kind of yeah, and I and I think in like with especially if uh, the generations that we touched upon from the first film was like late 60s 70s 80s early 90s a little bit today and it used to be the the reason was uh well most of the time they were adults at this point too they were you know over 21 many of them were college educated um and they had the tools to be able to cope with it, and they did it because, you know, hey, you know, I, I can handle this. Right. And most people weren't getting in, you know, just because they wanted to get famous really quick um, or because they were going to make a, a quick buck because that was, it was more of a career because people would do it, and especially in that, in, in that film, you'd see people like, oh, almost everybody there had done it for 10 plus years. Nowadays, not so much. Right. In, in the movie, there's a lot of... Uh male performers, mostly straight. There's female performers that do kind of pretty much everything. Did you get a, the opportunity to interview any gay adult performers? Uh, reached out to a few, uh, and uh, or, uh, over half a dozen, actually. Um, and uh, the two responses I remember the most were, were was one, who to this day, I promise I would never say his name, um, said, you know, I'm living in a cul-de-sac in suburbia, got kids that live a straight life. Right. And if people knew that I did porn, much less gay porn, I'd be treated like a pariah. And I, I respect that, yeah. you know? Yeah. And um, So it's almost like there was another obstacle, like a whole other layer to get into with the with the gay content. Yeah. Yeah. Do you you know, recently there's been a lot of high profile suicide cases with uh, gay adult performers. Uh, having seen what you've seen and, and kind of the experience you had, does that surprise you to see that? I feel like what's happening in particular, and I've been in Los Angeles for 14 years now, and I've seen the different facets of this city and the social constructs that are here. And both in straight and gay porn, there's always the thirst for the young performers. And I feel like, and in gay porn as well, they always want the young performer, the hot, new, young, you know, guy, and I think that I love that you're so well versed in this. Well, hey, man, you know that—that's another term, yeah. versatile, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you see that? <laughs> I try to know my subjects. It's clever. <laughs> um, I uh, I feel like a lot of these young men, um, they're 18, 19 years old. That's always, and that's the same way in the straight world. World, you know, with women, you know, okay, I get the hot new 18 year old, and I think the pornography is messing with their sexual identity at, at too young of an age where they haven't got a chance to really say who they are yet, whether it's through college or life or work or through relationships, and then all of a sudden it's out there on camera. Right. And then when you're the new toy everybody's tired of playing with it, two, three years later, and you're not even 23, 24 years old, that's just got to be crushing to uh, your identity and to your ego. and. It you sets you up for like yeah. a really difficult situation. Having now seen everything that you've seen, has it changed your relationship with porn? Like, can you still? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody knows that so much of that 90 whatever percent of it is fake, you know, and it's all camera positions or whatever. So, you know, that fantasy is out the window. Uh, you, you know, and it's just, it's a, it's a visual thing. And I, I, I'm a, I'm a bit of a softy and I'm a bit of, I'm okay. really emotional. I, I cry in the editing bin, you know. I'm like, even though I was there, I'm like, oh. I really want to hear about what you're working on now because there's a sequel. Yes, uh, we've got After Porn Ends 2 coming out uh, and uh, I've got some really cool flavor in this. Uh, one of the things I really, uh, I want to do in the first one I wouldn't be able to do in the first one is we have a strong African-American presence uh, in this. 
Um, we have a uh, little transgender uh, presence in this with the wonderful Venus Lux. The story continues. The story continues. And That's where can people find After Porn Ends? Uh, you can, uh, After Porn Ends can be found on uh, Netflix and on iTunes and on Hulu. Uh, Netflix and, and Hulu, please, because those rewatches are really good for us. So, Bryce, thank you so much for being Thanks, here. Dana. And Appreciate guys, it, buddy. stay tuned. I'm Davey Wavy, and today I want to talk to you about your bum, and more specifically, how you can stay ready. Pure for Men is a proprietary fiber supplement that is a blend of psyllium, flax, and chia seed. It works like a sponge going through your body so that when you go, you fully go. This, of course, reduces prep time and makes you more comfortable and confident. And since most of us don't get enough fiber naturally through our diets, this can make a difference in your overall health. For more information, visit pureformen.com. I'm Davey Wavy, and as a special thank you from AdamandEve.com, use discount code LIVE50 to save 50% off almost any one item and get free shipping in the US. Adam and Eve has every sex toy that you could possibly imagine, and also a lot that you probably couldn't imagine, but trust me, they're real. You'll also get 24-7 customer service, 100% customer satisfaction, and 20% of the profits go to fighting the spread of HIV and STDs, so you can get off with peace of mind. With 10 million plus highly satisfied customers, see what all the fuss is about at AdamandEve.com. Welcome back. I'm Davey Wavy, and I am here now. This is really exciting for me with Buck Angel. <laughs> You're like a legend, an icon. Like this is really exciting. Thank you for being here. No pressure, dude. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I know that people are, I'm sure, really familiar with your work, but uh, I kind of want to know a little bit more about the person that's beyond behind all of that. Mm. And I was recently on your Twitter, and you had a hashtag Trampa. Trampa. What's a Trampa? <laughs> A trampa, I am trampa, really. A trampa <laughs> is uh, a trans person who is an older, like grandpa. Like I'm an older trans person. I'm one of the oldest, like so, sort of so in the scene now trans person. A lot of younger trans guys, you know, talk to me and ask me questions and I'm sort of like the guy to come to to ask, you know, basic questions about transitioning. The trampa. Yeah, trampa. The trampa. <laughs> it's that easy, trampa. <laughs> So, so in your in your kind of real life, like, how does your family like view what you do? What's their relationship with your work? Are you really open about it? Or are they receptive? Well, my family has been incredibly amazing to me. They uh, accept me. I'm their son. When their friends come over, this is our son. You know, I think they're more concerned with the tattoos and the bald head than any. <laughs> they think, is your son in prison? <laughs> <laughs> no, my son is a gay porn star. <laughs> <laughs> Have they seen your work? Well, no, that's a little bit okay. like a boundary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't. We talk about my work, but we don't. Uh, I have never showed them any of my films. Okay. They know exactly what I do, who I am, what I do in the world, how much I travel, everything I do. They know everything. I walk the world and say I'm a man with a vagina. They know all that, and they're super proud of me. That's awesome. Yeah, it really is. Well, let's talk a little bit about the activism that you do, because mm -hmm. obviously you do porn, but there's there's all this other work that you do. Mm. My my porn work is my activism. My body is my activism. It's really, uh, my porn work, I didn't start porn to become an activist. It just sort of just came because people were, would write me and say, I think you're so amazing. I think what you say is so amazing, but I don't watch your porn. So I thought, how can I reach a higher or a bigger audience? And that was how I became an activist was I started to talk about being a transsexual person. Mm -hmm. I started talking about being a man with a vagina. I started talking about how we are all connected as human beings. And I felt like I needed to become a human rights activist in a way that nobody really talked about their bodies in human rights activism and how we don't have to transition like how everyone need, wants us to be. Like I don't have to have a penis to be a man. That became my activism to say, be yourself, right. love yourself, whatever that is. So that just became my like mantra and my activism. In terms of that activism, what are you most proud of? I'm more, most proud of becoming comfortable with my vagina and teaching other men to be comfortable with their vagina. That is my thing that I feel the most passionate about and the most happy to have now see probably millions of guys calling themselves a man with a vagina. Right. I never thought that would happen right. and now it's there. For the people at home, what, what can they do to support their transgender brothers, sisters, friends, family? Love. First and foremost, love and saying it's okay. You're totally normal. I know. I know a lot of people don't like to use the word normal, but a lot of people understand the word normal. And to tell a young kid or somebody who's going through transition, it's totally okay. You're totally normal. It's fine. That's the most important thing that you can do to somebody. Not make them feel alienated or feel like what they're doing is wrong. 
So let's talk a little bit about your about your porn. When you started, were there a lot of barriers and, and challenges that you had to push through? Oh, we could have to have a 50 hour show for that. <laughs> yes. The nobody would accept me in the porn business, which is really interesting because everyone thinks of the porn business as this really open-minded, right. um, it is the most conservative corporate world ever. And they slam doors in my face. And I, I'm not the guy you slam the door in the face, <laughs> clearly. Right. I pushed and pushed until I'm sitting here today because I pushed and I, and I still have to push. It's not easy for me still. Are, are you happy with the portrayal of trans men in porn? Like, do you feel like it's fetishized? Is that good? Is it bad? Fetishized like is a word that gets overused in the sense that it's a, a negative word. I am fetishized, 100%. That's amazing to me because what that does is it gives people an opportunity to see something that they particularly felt attracted to but don't feel alienated from. So saying, people have said, your porn fetishizes trans men. And I don't particularly think that's a bad thing. What it does is it gives people opportunity to be attracted to us. My work basically says to you, love your body no matter how that is. So if that's fetishizing, then that's fetishizing. How would you like to continue to fuck up or, or buck up the, the mm -hmm. system, especially the porn world? Well, continue to keep pushing my message of it doesn't matter who you're attracted to. We are attracted to people. We're not attracted to gender. And that is the one thing that my porn work does. So many gay men are attracted to me and they're like, oh, I'm attracted to you. Does that make me straight? Mm. How is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. But it, they immediately go towards my vagina. And they're like, oh, if I like you, then I like your vagina. Then that makes me straight. So what my, I think, I'm continually pushing this idea of what it means to be a man and a woman. So let's talk about your sex toy. Right on. Because this is really exciting. You, yeah. you brought this. Yeah. So I was reading about it and it, it's, it's, it's the first, right? It, this is the first in the world. Yes, wow. yes. Specifically a pleasure product uh, targeted specifically to the trans male world, which I fought for five years to have a toy company come to me or let me come to them and say, this is an important product. Nobody would do it and perfect fit brand did it. They're the ones who are pro who, who made this product. So show us, show us so how So basically this... what it is, it's a stroker. So like, you know, you have jack-off toys for cisgender men. Right. And so we, what happens is our genitals enlarge from the use of testosterone. And this one specifically is made for transgender men who are on testosterone. And so what happens is your genitals enlarge and you can slip this over your genitals and stroke with it like that. So basically, a lot of men don't want to touch themselves because it feels like a vagina. So what this will enable you to do is to touch yourself without actually physically touching yourself, but to finally have pleasure in a way that you've never had before. I mean, it seems so genius. <laughs> and like, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, it's no, that's amazing. It's a no-brainer. It five years. Five years. Oh my god. And I researched this for five years: how to make it stick, how to make it suck, how to do all the things that I needed it to do, wow. and not make it expensive because the trans community doesn't have a lot of money. So I needed to make it accessible that yeah, way. Yeah, this is fabulous. Thank you very much. What is the price point for it? Twenty nine ninety five. There you go. Yeah. Where can people find more of you? Oh, easy. Buckangel.com or Facebook, Buckangel, uh, Twitter, Buckangel, Instagram, Buck Angel, Buck Angel. Buck Angel. Just Google me. <laughs> yeah. And will you have the toy for sale at uh, Buckangel.com? Yeah, sign up on the mailing list at perfectfitbrand.com uh, perfect and we're going to release it in four weeks. Cool. You can already you can order it now if you want. Yeah, but nice. we're, the demand for it is insane. Well, thank you so much for, you. for, for being here today. This is thank incredible. Right and I on. think for everyone at home, this has been an amazing experience. Of course, a big thank you to Pure for Men and adamandeve.com because we couldn't have done this without them. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, more to come. Thanks for right being on. here. <laughs> Thanks for asking great questions.